Okay, welcome back for module eight, the last module in this Learn to Sell level one course from the Royal New Zealand York Squadron. So in this module, we're looking at the all important man overboard recovery drill. Uh, man overboard might sound a little bit sexist. Unfortunately, POB, person on board, was already taken. So man, man overboard, I like to think of that as human overboard. So you know, obviously we'll come and pick everybody up, not just the guys. Um, I'm sorry, ladies, that, that term seems a bit sexist. So during the America's Cup, we, um, there was a few men overboards, but they had ribs following them and come and picking them up. So they didn't need to do this manoeuvre, but I'm sure everybody on board could have done it. So here we have a person in the water. And like the slide says, it, it's certainly a nightmare for me. Um, I want to know that everybody on the course is wearing a life jacket and at the very least they're going to be floating if they fall into the water. Then all I need to do is go and pick them up. You know, there's a lot of pressure on the skipper to be able to get back and pick them up because a person's going to die if they don't get picked up. You know, in Auckland, he'd probably be in the water for maybe one or two days without dying of exposure. In colder climates, it might be one or two hours. So we need to get back to that person. We need to pick them up. The life jacket is going to do us a really good job and give us some time to do the manoeuvre, turn the boat round and get it back. We need to do that, though, safely. We need to not injure anybody else that's on the boat. Um, here we've got a video of uh, someone getting wet. Uh, in particular, just pay attention to this guy's head. So here we go, the sails are starting to fill. Yeah, the wind's the other side. Poof, on the jibe. And that guy just ducked in time. So let's um, go back and watch that again. I, I find the um, video quite amusing. So here we go. Crash jibe, and he just ducks in time. Wow, that was close to his head. There we go. Watch his head. Cool. So close. That was very nearly a head injury. We've got someone in the water. That was a crash jibe. So they didn't mean to jibe. Unfortunately for them, they're all looking in the water and they haven't noticed that the head sail is filled. So they are about to jibe again. And this time, I wonder if the, the person does get a hit on the head. Fortunately, that's all the video we've got. I would have liked to have seen the next 30 seconds, but there we go. That's someone getting wet. Also, we've got the person here. Bowmen are a special breed of sailors. They like getting wet. He's trying really hard, gripping onto the fore stay with his feet. But unfortunately, I hope he's a good swimmer because he doesn't seem to be wearing a life jacket. But he's probably not going to stay on that boat. Here we've got a photograph of someone jumping off um, a round-the-world yacht racing boat. So a few years ago, we had the Volvo Ocean Race pay a visit to Auckland. And during their in-port race, they often have celebrities on board at all of the boats. The end of the in-port race is the start of the next leg. I'm not quite sure who this was, but he obviously doesn't want to go to Brazil and he's getting off the boat. Again, they've, they've got a rib to come and pick that guy up. That was intentional. Staying calm when someone you care about is in the water is really difficult. But it's something that we must go into super professional mode and just do this manoeuvre very mechanically without emotions. If we're panicking, thinking that our loved one is going to die, then you know we're going to pile a whole load of pressure on ourselves and make it very hard to do this manoeuvre. So do your best to stay really calm and we're going to get this person back within a few minutes. So the person who witnesses the man overboard, normally that's that person, wants to shout man overboard. We need that person to point at the person that's in the water 
And wherever they go, as the boat turns, we need to have eyes on them all the time. It's very easy to lose sight of someone. You know, the boat turns and when you look back, you're looking at a different bit of the sea. And there's no landmarks necessarily to help you. It's just a blank canvas and where on that blank canvas the person is, you don't know. It's a really good idea to throw stuff in the water. So anything that floats, sea cushions, chili bin, trash. Okay, I don't really want to pollute the water, but I do want to get that person back. And if we create a debris field, a larger area for us to aim the boat into, maybe we can find that person in the middle of that debris field. So point, shout, throw. That's the first procedure that we're going to do. And that's really important that we keep an eye on that person. So in terms of survival times, not that nice to think of, of how long we're going to survive in the water. Uh, luckily in Auckland, we have, we're in this band here, so 16 to 21 degrees of so the water's that temperature all, the, all year round. So we've got several hours, maybe even up to 40 hours where we can be rescued. If the water temperature is colder, then we only have a few minutes before hypothermia is going to do its, its thing. So we need to get back to that person. The life jacket will keep them on the surface uh, if they're wearing a life jacket. So we just need to find them and get them back on board. This manoeuvre will help us do that in a very safe way. So here we go. We've got a boat coming in to pick someone up. It must be a rough day. They've got all their sail reefed here. Their furling head sail is rolled up. They've only got a little bit out. So they've depowered their boat as much as they can, but they're still healing quite a bit. And they're coming over to pick this guy up. It is essential that we do everything in our power to not end up in the water. We really don't want to be doing this man overboard drill for real. And wearing a life jacket will significantly improve the chances of survival. You know, looking for someone that's on the surface, you know, you've got a chance. In full wet weather gear, you're lucky if you're going to be able to swim for very long. If you've trapped some air under your jacket, you might stay afloat for a little while, but once that air escapes out the neck hole, you're probably going to drown. So wearing a life jacket is a really smart idea. They're not massive, they're quite small, it's certainly the inflatable ones, and they can be automatic. So you know, if, if you're unconscious when you go in the water, it automatically inflates and turns you the right way up. It's a really good idea to get, invest in some equipment to keep your life. Um, yeah, so it's a little bit grim, but hopefully we can do this manoeuvre really well and we can have some really good outcomes and rescue some people. The things that we need to keep in mind are definitely the manoeuvrability and the, how the boat moves, the systems on board. So if we've got sails that roll up really easily, then maybe we want to roll the sails up. If they're a bit awkward coming down, maybe we're going to leave the sails up. You know, how easy is it to start the motor? The size and the weight of the individual that we've got to retrieve, well, that makes actually getting them back on board a bit difficult and give you some tips on how we're going to do that in a little while. The experience of the crew and the level of training, well, we need to train and, and practice this manoeuvre regularly. Make sure everybody on board knows how to do this. Consciousness, yeah, if someone's unconscious, if they're wearing a life jacket that's inflated, they'll be fine, they'll be the right way up and they'll be floating. But they won't be able to get back on by themselves, so they're going to need us to help them. Normally, it's bad weather when people fall in the water. So we're likely to have rough conditions, and we need to think about those conditions. Let's have a look at this photograph now. So here we've got somebody in the water. They don't appear to be wearing a life jacket. The boat that they've fallen off, none of them have got life jackets on. This guy here is very generously holding out an arm to pull the guy back on board. Um, unfortunately, this here is a downwind sail, that's a Jenica. So their sails are eased a lot. The waves look like they're going in that direction. 
but this boat's sailing downwind, so it's moving. It can't be stationary because it's not facing into wind. So this boat is maybe doing, I don't know, five, maybe eight knots of boat speed downwind. This person can swim maybe at half a knot. Maybe an Olympic swimmer could start, swim at one knot. I don't know. That boat's sailing away from them. They're not going to be able to retrieve the person in this instance. They need to turn around and come back. So in our end position, as I alluded to on the last slide, we need to be facing the wind. If we're in, not in that no-go zone, the boat is going to be moving. Even when we get stopped, we're actually still going to be moving. The wind is going to blow us downwind slowly. If we're in this position, we'll get blown towards the person in the water, and that will be really helpful. If we come in on this position, lured of the person in the water, we might be able to get close enough to them to get a rope to them, but we're going to get blown away from them. We're going to get blown downwind faster than they are. Now, in learn to sail courses, I prefer to pick up in this position, and that's mainly because I'm going to have students on the windward side of the boat trying to pick the person up and that's going to be away from the boom. If we've got people on the leeward side of the boat, then the boom is going to be flapping around and potentially injuring someone. So this position would be the easier pickup in terms of making a connection with the person in the water, slightly more danger, getting a rope to them. If the boat is um, well managed, though, this would probably be the preference. Like I say, I choose to do it this way, because I'm trying to keep everybody on board safe and I don't want people forgetting about the um, boom while we're picking up a life jacket. So we, we don't actually have to do this for real. We have a life jacket called Bob that we um, throw in the water and we're going to retrieve that. So this is the final position that we're going to be in. Wind, front of the boat, sail flapping, boat stationary as much as we can. We do need to accept that we will be getting blown downwind slowly. So how do we get to that position? This is the manoeuvre that we're going to do to get us back to that position in a very safe way. We don't want to jibe. Jibing would be the fastest way to turn the boat and get back to them. Unfortunately, as we saw in a previous slide, if we jibe badly, it could be very bad for the people left on the boat. You know, we don't want to cause head injuries for the people that are on the boat. Bear also in mind that we're probably not feeling great. You know, there's a lot of pressure on us. Someone we care about is in the water and we need to get back to them. There's a bit of stress there. We may not do our best sailing. We may not do our best jibe. And if we don't do our best jibe, there is a chance we're going to hurt someone that's on the boat and that's going to make things worse, make the situation worse. If we drop the sails, well, you would know by now that it takes a little while to fold the sails up and pack them away nicely. Of course, this is an emergency. We're not going to do that. We're just going to dump the sails on the deck, start the motor, and go and pick the person up. Unfortunately, if we're not tidy with the ropes, they'll end up in the water, and it's quite common for the propeller just to hook up the rope, and that stops the, mo stops the motor dead. You'd think that the rope would just get chopped up by the propeller, but it doesn't. It just wraps and eventually goes tight and stops the motor. So then we've got a disabled boat. We've still got somebody in the water and we can't pick them up. So it's better to leave the sails up. If they're on roller furlers, then we can fold them. We don't need to fold the sails, take them down and fold them. We can just roll them up. And I think that's probably a good plan. But if the sails are not so easy to take down and it's going to take us a while to do that, then we're going to want to leave the sails up. Um, we don't need to panic, though because this is a manoeuvre that we can do in two or three minutes. And it's pretty much guaranteed to be able to get back to that person and pick them up. And we need to practice it. It's a good tip. When you, Every time your hat blows off, when we're sailing, so I don't know how many hats I've lost because they get blown up. Hats will float. 
for two or three minutes. And if you can get back and pick your hat up, well, that was a successful pickup. And your man overboard skills are really good. So practice every time your hat blows off and so spend less money on hats and be a little bit less pollution in the water. But mainly you'll practice this manoeuvre and all of your crew will know what to do. So let's look at a scenario when we're sailing upwind and someone's fallen off the back of the boat. Now we need to stop sailing upwind. So we're going to bear away and go on to a beam reach. Can be a broad reach, but we definitely don't want to go upwind anymore. We're going to sail away from the person, and I would suggest that three boat lengths should be enough to do this manoeuvre. If we sail a long way away, we run the risk of losing sight of the person. So we want to stay as close to them as we can, but we need to give ourselves a bit of a space to do the turn. We're going to do a tack and then kind of half a tack. So the first tack is a granny tack, and that means that we avoid doing the jibe. Now, at this position, it's really tempting to sail directly to the person, but we can't do that. We need to sail downwind. While we're sailing downwind, that's a really good time to roll up the head sail, get rid of that if it's on a roller furler. Start the motor as well. It would be stupid not to use the moto if we had it available. But we need to sail downwind and get below them. So this is the line that they're on, with the wind coming down from the top. When the wind hits them and then comes onto us, well, we're below them and we can start turning upwind and sailing towards them. And here we've got them, we've got the pickup on the leeward side. And as I said earlier on in the slides, this will mean that we've got a few moments to pick up that life jacket. If you're doing this for real, you would probably be on the windward side of them. So you stayed connected with that person that was in the water, just give you a bit more time to um, pick them up. So let's go through this maneuver again. So we're sailing upwind, we bear away, the waves are hitting the side of the boat. We sail away three, four boat lengths maximum. We do the granny tack and we start sailing downwind. At this point, we've got the wind on that corner of the boat. And we're sailing down. We're keeping an eye on them. When we get to their upwind of us, then we can turn upwind and we can start sailing towards them. And when we get close to them, we can throw them a rope and start thinking about how we're going to get them on board. That's the manoeuvre. It's called a figure of eight manoeuvre. I like thinking about the waves and where they are relative to the boat because it helps me thinking about where I am in that figure of eight manoeuvre. Now, what happens if we're on a reach and someone falls in the water? Well, we don't need to worry about this bit of the manoeuvre. We're just going to carry on reaching away, do the tack and come back for them. If we're sailing downwind, well, we just need to turn around and go back up. So on the other points of sail, we're just further around this manoeuvre and we just do the, do the rest of it. So we start with sailing upwind, bear away onto a reach, waves on the side of the boat, do the tack, the wave should be hitting that back corner of the boat, we're sailing downwind. When we get below the person, we can start sailing upwind back to them. So why do we want to do this manoeuvre? Well, let's consider this slide and have a look at the different angles that we could approach and whether they would be a successful pickup or not. So here we've got a boat sailing downwind. Now they can get to the person, they could drive straight to them, but they won't be able to stop. Their sails will be full, they'll run the person over and they'll just keep sailing. They won't be able to pick them up. Get, they can get there, but they can't stop. So for us to be able to stop, we need to be in this area down here with our approach. We need to approach from downwind. Up, approaching from upwind, we won't be able to stop. Now, if we're sailing 
dead into wind, our sails will be flapping and we won't be able to get there. So this boat is stopped and can't get to the person. If the motor was on and running, we could drive up to them and that would be a successful pickup. But under sail, this boat won't be able to get there because the sails are flapping. We need to stay out of the no-go zone as well. If we come in on a broad reach, or sorry, on a beam reach, we can get there really fast, we probably won't be able to get rid of all that boat speed. So again, if we're approaching on a reach, we end up having too much speed and not able to stop. We need to approach in what I like to call the Goldilocks zone, where we can turn upwind a little bit more, we can turn downwind a bit more. This is a close reach. We can get there, we can ease the sails out, and we can stop. We can approach slowly, you know, we can ease our sails out and slow the boat down. Now, if we do find ourselves reaching in to pick the person up, we might find that, hey, we've got lots of speed, we're not going to be able to stop. If we bear away, and then come up again, we'll find that we can get rid of the speed in this area here. If we find we're sailing in the no-go zone and our sails are just starting to flap, if our motor's running, we can drive up, same as this boat. If we have to do it under sail, well, again, we need to bear away, get into that Goldilocks zone, do the tack, and then sail up and pick that person up. So the, a successful pickup is only available if we're approaching from downwind so I'm sailing upwind to them. So we are downwind of the person in the water and we've got to sail into the wind to get to them. This is the ideal angle, which is a close reach, which means we can go close hauled and have a bit more up to go. We can come downwind so we can adjust our angle depending on the wind changing we can slow the boat down we can also stop i suggest we want the motor running just to give us a chance of picking them up if we find ourselves in this position we can still go and drive up okay now this isn't part of the level one course um, but i did notice on a lot of the courses that we run we have couples that want to go sailing together. And while the figure of eight is the go-to standard method of doing a successful man overboard recovery, it doesn't really work if you're sailing just as two people. And the reason for that is if, if your partner goes in the water and you're on the boat by yourself, that figure of eight is a lot of sailing to do by yourself and keep an eye on the person in the water. So this method the heave to method or hove to, sometimes people say, just takes away all of the sailing. There's one maneuver really that we need to do. So, this boat, similar situation to before, they're sailing upwind, someone falls off the back of the boat and they tack, but they don't ease the jib. The jib is held on the wrong side of the boat and that stops the boat. It's like jamming on the handbrake. That head sail wants to make the boat go backwards and the main sail wants to push the boat forwards. And if we've got a well-balanced boat, the boat will just stop dead. And then we'll start drifting downwind. So we'll just use that drift. It's very calm. There's no sails flapping. If we get a little bit off course, we can drive the boat forward but we're not reversing up to the person. We're just using the, the wind to blow us down onto the person. And that is a successful pickup. So if we stop sailing, the wind will blow us downwind. And we can use the motor just to make sure we're on target. If we get too far behind and we go a bit forward, we get too far forward, we reverse a little bit. And we should be able to line up next to the person. This is actually my favourite, most preferred method of doing man overboard. This is the method that I will go to first. 
when I first introduced this into the sailing course, there was a few people that said, well, we're just going to confuse people. We're going to get, we just need to give them one method. Let's just stick to the figure of eight. But we just had so many couples coming onto the course and I just couldn't see how I could really teach them how to do the figure of eight single-handed. So, and this is my favourite way of doing it, just stopping the boat and even if you just assess the situation, you know, are they conscious, can they swim and get back on board? You know, that's an option. Sailing away from them runs the risk of losing sight of them and not being able to come back. Okay, yeah, we're throwing garbage and seat covers and, and stuff in the water to make a debris field so that we've got a bigger target to come back to. But just stopping the boat and letting the boat drift back onto the person to me seems the best way to do it. Um, we can have a conversation with the person as we're driving the boat back to them and managing it. We just need to keep the boat between the wind, sorry, the, you know, between the person in the water and the wind. We just need to keep our boat in there and come back onto them. If this doesn't work, some boats don't like to heave to. If we mess it up, then I wouldn't persist. I would just go straight into the figure of eight. So I'm not really giving you a choice of manoeuvres. What I'm suggesting is the first manoeuvre you should do is to stop the boat. If we stop the boat with a heave too, we'll find that the boat's nice and calm and settled. We just need to keep the bow pointing to the wind, into the wind and then use the motor to just guide us back down onto the person. And that will be quite a successful pickup. If for some reason that we mess it up, well, we can't persist with this. We just need to take the handbrake off, ease that jib sheet, flick the jib through onto the other side, sail away, do the figure of eight and come back. So there we go. That's the man overboard uh, drill. We will be doing this on the, on the water and you'll have a chance to pick up a life jacket and practice this. Um, one other question, though. How would we get the person back on board? You know, they are going to be heavy and it's difficult to get them back on board. So how would you do it? I mean, if, if there's two of you on the boat, could you pick somebody up and pull them back on board? You might be able to. If it was a child, then that would be quite easy. You know, most adults would be able to pick up a child and drag them back on the boat. But a small adult dragging a large adult back on a boat, you know, it's probably not going to happen. So how are we going to do it? Well, there's a lot of equipment on the boat that can help us. They often have boarding ladders and swimming platforms on the back of the boat. So throwing a rope to the person in the water and taking them back to the back of the boat and letting them use the boarding ladder and the swimming platform, that's probably the easiest way. If the person is injured or unconscious, then that's going to be impossible. You know, they're not going to be able to do that. So getting a rope to them, using a winch or a halyard, lift them up on the boat. The boat's got lots of equipment on board that helps us adjust the sails. We can use that. We can repurpose those winches to do all the heavy lifting for us and get that person back on the boat. One really important point is, though, if you need to put someone in the water to swim over to them, to take a rope to them or to help them tie the rope to them, then that person needs to be tied onto the boat. The boat's moved separately quickly, um, even when they're not moving. You know, the wind and the tide drags them, and you'll find that you can't swim fast enough to catch up. So it's really important that if you're getting off the boat, you're tied onto it. Yeah, okay, long piece of rope, go and get the person, bring them back and get them back on board. But don't lose two people. Okay, so well done. You've completed all the modules. Please do come back and use the modules as a revision tool. You can revisit them anytime you like. You can do the quizzes as many times as you like as well. Hopefully your scores are really good. Um, there is a few more uh, things to explore on the learning portal. There might well be some 
outtakes and some funny bits that we've cut out. So yeah, have a look around, see if you can find them. And I look forward to seeing you out on the water.